coming out. Um, those of you that haven't met me, I'm Phil, um, one of the DevOps Ansible. I guess I'm the Ansible SME in this in this neck of the woods. Um, but uh, thanks for coming. John Roach has been working with us here for a little while, and he's graciously offered to give a talk on Ansible and Inspec. So I'll let him get to that. If any of y'all out there are interested in giving a presentation, or if can you can be hoodwinked and or subsequently, you know, uh, peer pressured into giving a talk, uh, let me know and I will do what's necessary to try and get you in. But uh, otherwise, if you know of anybody that would also be able to give a talk, you know, let me know and I'll follow up with them at some point. Um, I guess that's it for announcements. And, cool. Uh, it's all yours. Yeah. Hello. Uh, cool. Today is about Ansible and Inspect and uh, how it is meant to be, you know, for them to live together. Uh, so I, I'm John Roach, if you don't know me, I'm a DevOps architect in Assurance. Uh, you can reach me from these two, uh, you know, contact points. And, uh, okay, let me start with what is Inspec. So Inspec is actually an open source framework for testing and auditing your applications and infrastructure. So you can do both. Uh, you can test things like Docker configurations, firewall configurations, AWS Azure infrastructure setup, and even Google Cloud infrastructure setup, EOA, uh, added add-on. Uh, and uh, you can actually test things like, hey, is this Docker container, does it have the correct ports to expose? Does it have these things installed? Uh, is it using the correct baseline? Uh, and uh, actually, yeah, let me show some examples. So this is how it looks like. I uh, should have chosen better colors. <laughs> Uh, but uh, basically you can, for example, here we're defining, hey, is the SHD configuration using protocol version 2, right? Or you can say for Windows, you know, server, you can say, hey, uh, is the uh, this task name URI has this parameter and is it enabled? Uh, if it's Docker service, you're, you're seeing like, hey, is it actually pulling it from the Alpine repository, right? So these are different uh, tests that you can write uh, for a given inspect specification. Um, and uh, when you run a uh, you know test, uh, so here I'm running inspect execute Jenkins. Uh, basically, what it does is that you point it to a directory that has all of your specifications, and you say, okay, run run all the tests. And when it does, this is usually what you would see for a uh, you know uh, a working test. A, a, actually, I shouldn't say working, but a successful test. And you see a bunch of nice uh, text saying that hey. You know, I did uh, this test here, Jenkins 1.0, and it checks the, if the Z Jenkins app is installed. I, I uh, also checked uh, that this Jenkins service is enabled and it's running, right? So all these actually passed uh, for the server. And it targets the local. So you can actually target different uh, hosts to remotely and, and test them out. Um, so uh, I'm go next. So I'm gonna do an intermission here. Uh, so. This is about development and development cycles. Uh, a lot of things that we do, uh, you know, is that especially if you're using Ansible, is that normally you write your Ansible scripts at first, and then you say, okay, uh, let me test it out, and then, you know, then you'll continue to do more development, and then you'll test it out again, right? So in uh, software world, there's something called test-driven development, where you write your tests first, you let it fail, and then you write your uh, code to satisfy that, uh, you know. Uh, that test requirement. So this is actually, especially I, I found it very powerful for a DevOps position because then you, you, first of all, you know your requirements, right? So the developer comes to you and says, hey, I need a Jenkins server that, you know, that works like this. Or, uh, or maybe you need an IS server that works in a certain way. So you write the test, right? Defining what, you, what is needed and literally you mirrors what's in the ticket and you let it fail, and then you write only the Ansible scripts that you really, really have to, to fulfill that test. Uh, so when we're going, when you're doing things like this, when you're testing uh, your environment, actually, that's actually how we're working right now, and we found it very powerful. Uh, and the cycle is, oops, so the cycle is that, you know, as I said before, uh, you uh, write some, uh, you write some tests, right? Uh, that's step one, make sure it fails, and then you write enough code uh, so to test, uh, I mean to uh, to get passing or failing, and then if it succeeds, only then would you, you know, move on to the next uh, specification. 
So this is a very, that's why it's very powerful to work with Ansible and Inspect. Uh, so to get Ansible roles tested, you need to write it in a certain way. Uh, so what I did is that I open sourced this, so you guys can pull this in later on. Uh, and basically this, this is a role definition that uh, uses Inspect to run your tests. Uh, so I'm gonna open that and just go over it very quickly. Actually, I'm going to go over. Uh, oops, right? Here it is. I'm going to go over existing. Uh, see that. There it is. Okay, so this is a uh, Jenkins test I wrote uh, that basically uh, installs and sets up the Jenkins server. Right? Uh, pretty straightforward. Now, a couple things you need to do. Uh, so first of all, uh, I, we use Ansible Galaxy to manage our uh, dependencies for roles. Uh, so first of all, I, I make sure that this traverses through the requirements.yaml for this role, uh, and then pulls in any roles dependencies that this role might have. And if you're not, uh, so if, if you're wondering what a role is for Ansible, it's basically a definition of, of certain tasks that you can reuse, right? So sometimes you might have those dependencies saying that, hey, I have to install Java before I ever actually get to run or install Jenkins, right? So uh, that kind of does that. And then you run this command here called kitchen test. So uh, kitchen is actually written uh, for, it was actually originally written for a chef only, uh, but now there's something called kitchen-ansible that literally uh, makes sure that you are able to test. So it's called test kitchen. You're able to test your uh, Ansible scripts and Ansible roles and all that awesome jazz. Um, so in the in the example I've given, this role template uh, is actually a uh, you know all of this except the tasks that you would need. So definitely go through it, or if you want to pull it for your own work, uh, definitely feel free to use it. Uh, but basically, you, there's some gem uh, gem requirements that you have to do. So you have to install Ruby uh, to run these tests. Uh, so these are the you know general requirements that you would need. Uh, and then you would have a test folder, and in this test folder you will have a test YAML that basically it look, it, it's, it's a test of how you would actually use your role, right? So here I'm saying, hey, use this role, Ansible roles .jenkins. Uh So here's the requirements, and uh, you have a very simple Ansible config saying that, hey, don't check hosties, because <laughs> it's going to be automated, right? You don't want to put a bunch of definitions. And uh, here's where the roles live. Right, so this is where it gets downloaded. Now, the most important file here is actually the kitchen.yaml file. Um, and I'm gonna go over this very quickly. So here you can actually see, we define a driver, saying that, let me increase the size of this a little bit. Can you guys see it? Okay. Uh, so we define a driver here, I'm actually using the Vagrant driver. So when it's gonna, what it does is actually brings up a VM using the Vagrant tooling and basically runs uh, the role, Ansible role, and uh, uh, dependencies against that VM, and then it actually runs your inspect tests against it. And this is all done like in, in, in sequence, right? Uh, so here I'm defining the provisioner to be Ansible playbook. So you can have other provisioners here too, Chef, and uh, I think Puppet and other stuff, but of course for here as Ansible. Uh, you define the host as localhost. Uh, you, you have some like Apple releases, uh, those configurations out there. Uh, and I actually, what I do is that the reason why I added the roles into a certain path is that I pull that role in into the VM and copy it within the VM so the VM doesn't have to pull it in again and I don't have to deal with like network configurations or whatever. So whatever the test is, it actually pulls that in. Uh, the platform, I'm running this against sim.2 and the verifier, so this is the most important thing. So you can actually use different verifiers. Uh, in case you don't know, there's actually other test toolings out there to test servers and configurations. One of them is actually called server spec, and there's like, uh, which is also dependent on our spec. Uh, so you, basically these are different test frameworks, but from what I've found so far, the most comprehensive one, and the one that actually has you know, more toolings is actually in spec. And uh, you know, definitely test it out. Another thing I'm doing is that I'm actually uh, using a, uh, uh, I like to reuse my stuff. So I actually place my in spec tests in some other uh, path in a Git repository, and it downloads that and runs it against it, right? 
So at the end of the day, uh, this is what you see. So I'm going to just play this here because I don't want to take your time. So you'll. <laughs> I, yes. Sorry, just a quick question. So that vagrant box that you're standing up, is that is that new infrastructure and then you're running the inspect test against that or Yeah, that so just, it's like an ephemeral VM yeah. that gets created and destroyed in one go. That's what I was gonna ask. So so the vagrant server is what you're actually running inspect on, you're not running Yeah. You're you're not looking at the new vagrant <clears throat> VM you just built because you just built it. Yeah, you're, so you're building that to run inspect on. Yeah, so exactly. So so Vagrant, so what we do is that Vagrant brings up the VM, mm -hmm. Ansible provisions that VM, right? Uh, and it inspect basically gets in installed into it, mm -hmm. and it runs inspect to test all the requirements. Okay. So I'm going to so, so but show since you. But you're automating it through Ansible, do you really need to test it? I mean, I, I oh, yes. using inspect against. Like, yeah, so there's reasons. I'm going to come okay. to why we need it. <laughs> Uh, but uh, let me play this around. So, so basically, here you're seeing that uh, the vagrant is pulling the uh, CentOS 7.2 image, and uh, it's actually you know booting it. I'm gonna skip a little bit so we don't lose time. In connections, and uh, so provisioning. Actually, this is the early provisioning. So it installs some Ansible stuff. Uh, <coughs> skip it. So, so until it gets to here, right, it actually sets up your environment to run Ansible and inspect, right? So after this, it actually is, this is the portion where it's actually running the Ansible role that you created. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first, of course, because my Ansible role, Jenkins, depends on Java, it first installs Java, so it first runs the Oracle Java role, right? So there's some dependency management that Ansible does for us here. Uh, so I'm gonna skip this a little bit. So after installing Java, it actually starts working on the Jenkins role. Skip a little bit more. Okay. Here it is. So uh, the Jenkins got installed, uh, and then it runs the inspect tests, as you can see. It gets verified, and then it's destroying the VM, and it's done. So it takes around two minutes, 27 seconds, to actually go to the full you know, testing thing. Um, now, let's go back. You're just testing that all the Ansible playbooks ran correctly? Yeah, all the, all the role actually works. Yeah. So, as I said, there's a couple reasons why you would use Inspect for this. The first reason <clears throat> is, again, test and development. Making sure that you fulfill the promise that was like, made, right? Yeah. Because once you receive a ticket, I don't know how you guys work, but like if you get a card, if you're working Agile, you get a card. If you're working in uh, Jira land, you have a ticket, uh, or other, there's other ticket systems that, you know, a request comes in and says, oh yeah, I need this type of server with these spec specifications that has this stuff installed, like as such, right? Yeah. Uh, and at times you can get very detailed. So what you do first is that you write the test first, allow this to fail, make sure it fails, but you make sure that your tests are written well, and after that, what you do is that you simply say, okay, I'm gonna start writing my Ansible scripts to fulfill these tests, to make sure they pass. So that's the first reason, right? It helps you with your development, and basically it's the same concept where software developers write unit tests, right? So this will be your unit test for your Ansible scripts, okay? Uh, so that's, that's a, one example. Uh, I also wanna show you guys the, uh, uh, some inspect, the actual uh, inspect, things so we can go over them. So this is what the test looks like uh, that you saw that was running. Uh, basically it had uh, three files and these are written in Ruby. Uh, so all inspect tests are written in Ruby. And uh, this is how you basically define it. You say, hey, this is, the, this is specification 1.0. It has an impact of one. That means that if this does not work, that means nothing is working. That means that the whole test failed and uh, it's not good to go, right? So you can actually define a value between zero and one that basically can, like if you have something that's 50% passing or 60% passing, you can allow it to be accepted, right? Using the automation. Uh, so there's some things that you can do. Uh, so here, first of all, does impact one mean that it's really, really needed that, hey, uh, this Jenkins service should be a systemd service 
it should be installed, enabled, and running. Right? So these are all the tests that you would specify for your application. Uh, these are some port configurations. So basically saying that, hey, I'm, Jenkins should be listening to 8080. Right? And you can actually have some repo specifications saying that, hey, uh, Jen so this repo should be set up, and, uh, and then Jenkins repo should exist and be <coughs> enabled. Right? So you can actually specify things like this. Uh, and then that way it just actually keeps you pretty focused, right? Now, let's see where else where I'm at. So if you had two uh, tests that were uh, 0.5 impact, they both have to fail for the whole thing. Exactly. And then you can, you can actually, so depending on how you set up things, uh, you can have, you can actually say, hey, my, my cutoff level is actually 0.5. Oh, okay. You can do that too. Uh, however, like, then why are you using 0.5? But, <laughs> but you can actually say, hey, my cutoff level is 0.5, and if it's worse than that, don't allow it. If it's better than that, allow it. Right? You can do things like that. Right? Uh, I'll go to the, <clears throat> sure. If you don't mind, I don't know how much time you have, so if you can't. One hour, I think. So please. <laughs> so the um, the test-driven development. Where where do you see that? being used mostly, or do you see it being used really with this sort of infrastructure automation, or do you see developers using it? I mean, No, this is infrastructure automation. This is writing code for your infrastructure. No, I know, but uh, is that, so you're, you're saying that test-driven development is something that's relative to this type of software development and not you know, other types of software development, or are you seeing test-driven development used even in writing Java code and stuff like that? Yeah, same, same idea, same concept. So test-driven development, and in, in I don't know if you know software development, but test-driven development is a uh, work process that you can apply uh, when you're writing Java code. But I'm, what I'm saying is that you can actually apply that when you're writing infrastructure code too. And this inspect actually helps you out and makes you focus on the requirements and making sure that you deliver and then that your whatever changes you do is always tested. So you don't learn about your mistakes until it gets to production or other higher environments, right? You actually are able to test it while you're developing the whole role. And uh, so that way you, you don't have any you know, you know, external dependencies in a way. Right. Right? Uh, so I, I believe that duplication is evil. <laughs> if, you, if I do this once, I want to do it again. And uh, I was thinking like, how can we reuse inspect tests that were created for roles, right? Uh, so especially this came up when our uh, uh, basically, chief security officer came to us and said, "Well, you're running all these scripts. How am I going to know that these configurations are correct or are they are as like promised, right?" So we were like, "Okay, well, let, we can rerun, reuse those tests that we wrote for a role, and just continuously you know, run them against a, a box or an environment, and actually like do do monthly checks or uh, weekly checks for auditors. So that way, if we, especially this is very valuable when you're hardening." An operating system, right? So when you're hardening an operating system or a Linux system, and you have uh, PCI compliance requirements, right? Especially regarding uh, user permissions on the box, like how are you going to prove saying that hey, I actually have these user defined, these users defined on this box at this point, right? And time, uh, so you can continuously run Ansible scripts on them, which is which is a thing you can do, or you can just run a test against them just to test to see if those uh, users are defined on that box. Um, and uh, it's pretty nifty. So you can actually define, check uh, like fire, firewall configurations, uh, see if SE Linux is enabled or not. It's, like this is very powerful when you're defining uh, hardened boxes. Uh, so here is how I like quite currently use uh, this for generating reports. Uh, so I install, in, I install inspect on all our boxes first of all. Uh, second thing is that I, I do some provisioning. At the end of every playbook. I started adding these uh, run inspect tests plays uh, that basically defines which which tests should be added uh, to be used. Right. So here you can see, hey, this Jenkins box requires at least a Jenkins test to run against it. Right. Uh, and then I add this inspect test tag to this task. That way, I don't have to run the whole play or playbook because when I run this same playbook with the inspect test tag, it only runs this one task that basically just runs the tests and reports back, right? Um, so this is this basically allows us to reuse what you've done for the role uh, for all our boxes. And uh, 
it's pretty nifty. Uh, so let me see if I can find that play. So basically, this is how it looks like, right? And and this is the uh, this is the playbook that I saw, and this is the inspect uh, YAML file, basically, or inspect play, I should say, or I should not play because it's a high host tasks, inspect tasks that need to happen to run the test. So it actually pulls it from GitHub, right? Uh, pulls the test in, and then just executes it with no color, and then just reports it on Slack, saying that, yes, all the tests passed. And uh, if the tests don't, then, so next thing I'm going to do on this code piece of code is actually add a, like an a error block in Ansible, and say, hey, if this task does not pass, or exit codes with a non-zero value, report as test not passed in Slack. And that way, we can immediately start looking into things. Why is it not passing? Which develop point? What change that now is not passing, right? Because that's very important for us to know that, especially for PCI compliant environments. Like, it should it needs to be governed, right? Um, so yeah, this is this is kind of nifty. Uh, we got to play with. So let me see what's next. So uh, right now we're working on uh, one of the. Uh, I think it was. God, was it OpenShift? I want to say I think it's OpenShift. They have an Ansible role called uh, Linux hardening for CentOS boxes. So right now we're working on creating an inspect for it that uh, with our um, you know, CSO, probably next week, we're going to sit down together and he's going to define certain business requirements for our boxes and say, yes, these boxes should be hardened these ways because you know that's what we need to be hardening it for. And then and he can like the the because the tests are so easy to write, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's literally just writing like a sentence. We can create the, that very quickly together, and what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna actually run this inspect test against all of our Linux boxes periodically, so we can generate an HTML report that we provide our auditors or even our own selves just to show, hey, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're making sure we're testing our boxes, it's hard and everything looks good, and uh, you know, we're good to go. And uh, if, if something breaks, we actually get uh, informed via Slack, which is a uh, pretty nifty, and uh, you know it's not too uh, noisy, so that's kind of nice. Um, and uh, so another thing is that uh, what we're going to do is that whatever Ansible development we're going to do from now on is going to be TDD. Uh, we're always going to write the test first, and then actually write the specifications or write Ansible scripts uh, to make sure that we first of all deliver uh, what was promised, and the second thing is actually you know. Uh, reuse those tests for uh, you know governance purposes or uh, you know uh, auditing purposes, uh, and uh, yeah, and we're gonna have surface these stuff using Jenkins. Uh, so I did show an example report. Uh, let me see if I can quickly show that. Oh, here it is. So this is a failing test and how it looks like. It's pretty ugly, <laughs> but basically here you can see uh, I had a uh, I had a file test here. And this, this basically failed, so it couldn't find this file in the server, right? Uh, and here you can see, so this file doesn't exist. Pass this, let's pass that. Oh, here it is. So it says, hey, this also failed. Jenkins should have been installed, right? It actually shows you exactly which part of the test failed. So it's pretty nifty. And uh, when it's green, it's all green. You don't see these red stuff. You just see this test passed, this test 